Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love and today I am going to show you how fun it is to play in some watercolor powder. I am a little bit obsessed with playing in the watercolor powders and I love the pieces that we're going to create today and I have four different ways that I use the watercolor powder that I'm going to show you and then you can see how much fun these are and how it is that you might want to experiment and play with the powders. So this is a little bit of an art supply deep dive on the powders and how to use them. So I can't wait to show you what we're doing today. So let's get started. So I've got some color swatches that I did this morning because weirdly enough, even though color swatches greatly aid in picking out colors, I've been terrible over the years of swatching out different things that I have. So doing stuff like this is the perfect opportunity to figure out what colors do you have? <laughs> Watercolor powders are super cool. They're powder form. You add water to them and they turn into a color. And I have several different varieties of watercolor powders. I've got a whole box of just random stuff I've collected or that have come in my art box subscription, um, which really is one of the first ways I get introduced to a lot of the fun different supplies is I'll go look around the art store and say, what is this? Or it'll come in my art box subscription and I'm like, ooh, what is this? Let's play. And so that's how I got really into some of the watercolor powders with some of these colors that came in the art box were just amazing. Um, these five colors, this wisteria, orange, bougainvillea, turquoise, and navy all came in a sketch box one month and I absolutely love, love them. And this orange, ah. Uh, just insane about it. And this bougainvillea, here's a piece that I did a while back. It separates into the yummiest pretty colors. And I thought, oh, I love those. Let's get those out. And then at some point I ordered some Crafters Warehouse colors. I'm sorry, the Crafters Workshop colors. Um, and they put out color sparks. And if you've got any older color sparks, they didn't have a colored label and now they do and you can get lots of colors. And then I also had gotten some infusions colored um, stains. And these are a little bit different in that they have color in them and they have walnut crystals. Um, so what that does with the walnut crystals is they give you pretty color but they also have the brown um, walnut crystals in them. So they're not as pure a color. They're mixed in with those crystals, whereas these other ones are fairly pure in the color. And so I really wanted to know what infusions ones I had, which is what made me do this fun little exercise. And look at this sleigh blue. That is the prettiest color. And I love this sleigh blue, this turquoise up here, and this uh, bougainvillea orange and wisteria. I love those colors. And so now that I have actually swatched out everything that I've got, I can uh, pick a lot easier. The other powders that I happen to have are these uh, Ken Oliver Crafts Color Burst colors. And these don't have any um, walnut crystals in them. So they're nice pure color. They're a little bit brighter um, in the color. And I thought that was super cool too. So now that I have all these swatched out, we're going to make something fun today. And you can use watercolor powders in a couple of different ways. I'm going to kind of put these in a stack and, and talk about the different ways to use these powders. So one way that I like to use them, and I'm going to use the orange. Oh, let's use the bougainvillea because it separates in such a pretty way. So the first way that I use it is I put it on the paper and I get a paintbrush and I get some water in my paintbrush. And once your water gets dirty, you'll want to go ahead and swap it out for clean water because these make the water dirty fairly quickly. And so I usually have more than one cup of water sitting on my table. Um, but you can put the powder on, come back with your brush, add water to it. And that's one way that we can use these. Another way that we can use these is put the water on the paper and sprinkle the powder into the water. So that's another way that you can get fun effects. 
third way that you can use it, and I think it says it on the bottle of one of these, is put the powder on your paper. And what I like about these two is they're slightly uncontrollable. So if you like to have a lot of control over your colors, um, you're going to have less control over some of these. So the third way they say do it is put color down on your page and take a spray bottle and spray it with water. So that's super fun. And then a fourth way that we could use these that I kind of thought of as I was looking at these is you can have a color palette. And we'll go ahead and put these on my little porcelain palette since we're using watercolor. But we could put a little bit of the color on our color palette. You got to be careful how much of the stuff you squeeze out. <laughs> it's powder. And safety first, if you're using a powder, it would be really wise to use a mask like a in 95 masks, something like that. Um, but you could put some powder, mix it with some water, and then put that on your paper. And that would be the most traditional way to paint with this as far as a traditional watercolor. But I am not a traditional painter kind of thing. I like these other methods better. I like the unpredictability of painting with something and not knowing what I'm going to get when I'm done and just seeing like what abstract yumminess can I create today and so I'm going to create with the put the powder on the paper and add my um, water to that and just see what we can create today so let's get started all right, now that we have taken a look at colors and we've swatched out our different colors, I'm going to be working on this Portofino 100% cotton, 140 pound paper because I have these little pads I'm trying to use. Um, it's a hot press paper, so use any paper that you want to use. But this is the paper that I did my sample colors on, so I can see exactly how this stuff is going to look on this paper. So I do recommend you do that because if you do samples on, say, a cheap paper and then you go to work on expensive paper and it reacts completely differently you're gonna be like what happened and I am in love with these um, wisteria orange bougainvillea this turquoise and this slate blay uh, slay blue so that's what I'm going to use but I wouldn't have known that if I didn't have like all these little samplers that I made and so that's what I have pulled out and I thought what if we took inspiration from our little sample where we did the color pieces on each of these and we tried each of these techniques to see you know what can we get so the first one was we put um, one of these we put powder on the paper and then we added water to the powder so I'm gonna do that one on this and then we also did we sprayed one of them so I'm gonna do that and we're just going to see what we can get and I like doing more than one because then when you mess up one or you've got way too much powder because this is the first time you've done it and you're like whoa <laughs> we will be able to have a couple others that we're experimenting on so these are very strong the powder does come out um, very very heavy so I would definitely say on these less um, is more so I don't want you to get super heavy with big piles of color um, let's do a little of this wisteria I'm just in my mind kind of thinking I want um, a little abstract here so I'm gonna got some clean water because this water gets dirty really fast and I'm gonna take this and just see like oh ooh, look how pretty that bougainvillea is and kind of mix each color separately and I'm kind of working towards a little abstract here and that's funny because as that bougainvillea separated I could see little blue crystals in there so that's probably one of the crystal colors making up that color <gasps> Ooh, look at this orange oh my goodness that's pretty and then what was this this was the oh oh the dark wisteria I kind of now that I've got that in there want some more of the dark oh look at that oh so that's kind of like the second technique have water there and put your powder in the water holy cow how beautiful it spread out and did like its thing 
That was super cool. So, let oh, way too much orange. Darn it. <laughs> now what we could do is maybe scoop some of the orange up if we think that was too much and then we can move it around or we can wash it off our brush. Um, so we could definitely work with that, but don't get, don't get overly excited if you're like, I ruined it, because no, 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 these are abstracts and we're trying to be creative, move stuff around, test it out. We just want to see what this stuff even does at this point. And then as you really get good with it, you can then start making it do other things for your pieces. Look how pretty these are. These are the prettiest colors. That was the bougainvillea I was putting on. So let's stop. Let's stop right there with that because I'm actually kind of loving what it's doing. And I can see some mark making on top. And these dry darker and a little bit uh, less vivid. So I love that. Um, as it's drying, we could come back in here and dip water on it and just um, make it bloom out. So if you like watercolor blooms, we could do that. Let's do the spritz on. Whoa, that was a lot of orange. Um, I really want this bougainvillea in there, but I don't want it to be all orange. But let's just see, let's just see what we got. Whoa! And where is my spray? Here we go. <gasps> Whoa! Look at that. Oh, okay. So I want a little bit to go that way. Oh! <gasps> And I don't want to overdo it. So I almost want to be like, okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Don't do anything else to it. That's pretty. I'm loving what that's doing. Okay, so third one, we could put water on here and spritz powder in it and see what that does. So we could go ahead, put some water on here. That's kind of orange water. So let's grab our other clean water. I like to have multiple clean waters around and I've got powder that spritzed over, but that's okay. We're just gonna tap some powders in here and see if we can get these to start moving. And then I also come back, even though I put water on that paper, I come back and spread it around because it's not so thick that it's doing exactly everything I want it to do. And just move that around and see like what you can get. I can see some of that uh, brighter color sprinkled over, but that's okay. Just kind of moving it around, seeing what feels good as we're working. Oh, don't want that all to be orange. Just scoot that around a little bit. I really love the bougainvillea. And then when I do stuff like this, I tend to overpower it with all the other colors because it's actually a really pretty soft color and I don't want to lose it. Oh, see, that's pretty. Now we're getting a real pretty abstract going there. I really like this blue and that turquoise. I did not end up using it. Oh, maybe I'll just stick with the, let's go back with the wisteria. Let's just make this a purple orange set. I did have some other plans there, but you know, sometimes you just got to go with the inspiration. Ooh, look at that. And if you get really delicate, just a little here and there, can really start to add some details, change it a little bit without being overwhelming. Because trust me, it's really easy to overwhelm yourself with these colors very quickly because of the powders are just like, wham, bam, rah, suck them in your face, like vivid and intense. And then you're like, oh, that totally wasn't what I expected. <laughs> so a little bit lighter handed, that's what we need. And we could also, while we're doing this, we can come back as these start to dry, not when they're completely dry, but when they're still kind of, not super saturated, but they're kind of damp still. And we could come back in, dab some water and force some separations and, bl and blooming. Now, if it's completely dry and you do this on top of these, you'll end up with some really cool um, things like this where it re-wets it and it completely makes a new pattern like over here. 
Um, so I love that about these also. You can let it completely dry and then mark make again on top of it with more water and that's super cool. So I'm going to let these dry and then we will continue with some mark making and stuff. And we could also make, we could do some mark making now if you're thinking, oh, I know I'm going to want to, you know, drag some graphite through this or, you know, maybe start making some marks. We could do that too. Look at that. That's real pretty right there. Um, so you could do some mark making at this stage if you want to drag things uh, through wet. Um, we could also kind of pull... Um, I've got, here we go, just, this is a clay tool. Um, you can pick like different tools and you can drag color through. I'm just trying to give you some different ideas before I let these completely dry. You know, another thing we could do is, ooh, I've got these fun little shapers. You can get some of these um, from the jelly plate or you can get some from uh, the Catalyst company. They've got Catalyst wedges with different shapes in them. Um, and you could, you could at this point, before it's dry, do a little drag through and just see, you know, what did that do? Ooh, so that's actually super cool right there. Um, so that's another fun thing that you could consider. And then once this is dry, we can mark, make, and do some stuff on top. So let me let these dry and I'll be back. All right, so these are not 100% dry, but I wanted to come back in and add some additional marks with water on this first one. Um, and it's dry enough for me now to be able to come back and say, oh, let me dip water right on top. And it will kind of like reactivate and create some marks in that watercolor that I'm not otherwise going to get. And as it dries, they'll magically kind of like up here. And I don't want to do too many, but I did want to do a couple. And I could come back over here to this one and same thing, kind of do some water distortions that'll come back and look really cool. So I might do that in a couple spots on this one. just to kind of have fun and see, you know, what can the water do? What can we get it to reactivate and look like? Just having fun. These were big water bubbles up here and a little down here. So just having a little bit of fun. This might have still been too wet, but I thought we would at least give it a little go. And then I want you to not be tempted to use a heat gun on these. Let them naturally kind of do their thing and go eat some lunch and take a little break from your paint table because you really want that to have a chance to sink in and do fun stuff. And this one is going to be a great big spot. Oh, you can even see if you get into a real hurry, <laughs> you could mop up water with like a little shop towel like if we take this right up here and the reason why I say a shop towel and not a paper towel is because this doesn't have the paper towel texture like a paper towel does um, but we'll be able to see that's the one where I just mopped the water up and you can see it made a little bit different look than what we're going to get if we let the water sit there on this other piece that I did a while back. You can see if we let it sit there, we get little ridges of color around it surrounding the water bubble. Whereas when I just took the paper towel and dried the water off of it, I didn't get that ridge of color. And I'm looking for the ridge of color. So don't be tempted to do that unless that's exactly the look you're going for. There's a reason why you let these sit and dry um, naturally. So go take a little break and we'll be back. All right, we have let these completely dry. And I thought we could now play and mark make on these. So whatever your favorite mark making stuff is, that's what I want you to work with. But I pulled out some options. I always love to do uh, gold mica. This is my Kuretake gold mica ink, which I like to use with my favorite dip pen. This is my Kakamori 
a brass nib, but I also like using a regular dip pen so you can kind of play with those in your inks how you want. I also love Posca pen and I thought I'd pull out some of my Neo Color 2 crayons because they're water soluble. They've got lots of colors and I thought, meh, why not? So I'm just going to be inspired to create and I kind of feel on this one here that maybe I want some of the gold and I may pull a stencil out we'll see but I'm kind of feeling like my yummy mark making that I like to do and so you could set yourself a challenge on one of your pieces to do something that you don't normally do so that's why I have the other things out here you know pick one piece as your favorite and say okay I'm gonna do my favorite marks on this I know when it's done I'm gonna love it and on these other two I'm gonna get adventurous and try something I don't normally do and that's the way I want you to kind of think of these I want you to think of one whichever one's your favorite Make, it, make your favorite marks and make a piece of art that you're like, okay, I know I'm going to love this. And it's going to make the whole day of creating worth it. And then on the other two, I want you to get outside your comfort zone and do something that you would never normally do. Use a color that you wouldn't normally use. Use an art supply that you don't normally pull out. Use a mark that you're not as familiar with. So brainstorm some marks and see what you can create doing that and I want you to get adventurous and see what we can create today so I actually kind of love everything I've got going on right there I think I'm gonna pause that one right there I'm going to rinse out my nib I don't want color to stick in it and that nib to get stuck so I liked doing the circle on this end because I didn't pull the paint out to the sides on this side so in my mind don't touch <laughs> in my mind it kind of balanced that out for me mentally all right so I might come back to that but let's step outside our comfort zone I'm gonna do that too um, and maybe we've got some neo color crayons here and we can just decide like what can we do that we don't normally do and if you're thinking oh I love it so much I don't want to ruin it set it to the side until you come back and can decide yes I love this and here's what I want to do with this I'm not so attached to most pieces that I can't experiment especially when I'm doing a series like this so I just jump right in I'm like all right well, let's go for it <laughs> but if it's a piece that I'm attached to or I'm thinking oh I love this and I don't want to mess it up then just set it to the side and keep it until the day that you're like okay I know what this needs that's pretty haha uh -huh. totally glad I did that because it pulls that color out of all these splatters this was purple <laughs> to get a little magnifying glass up here y'all they write so little on these it's ridiculous and I'm old this is Abergine and I can't see anymore even with my glasses on and this is saffron so I thought we need to bring a magnifying glass up here to the art table so I can read the tiny 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 little labels they put on these art supplies okay so let's move over here to this I'm loving that right now I don't know if that's going to be finished or not and I want to show you um, if we pull in these were the ones where I you know took a paper towel and dried the water off of it and we got a pretty clean edge on that water that difference that we got But if you look at these that I let dry natural now you can see that it's edged in color and it has like its own decorative element in it and I'm really glad that I did that instead of forcing the water off because this is a much prettier more interesting mark to me so what if you just kind of come in here and do something that you've never done before maybe you've got some marks and some scribble maybe you want to do some writing Ooh, maybe you do calligraphy or maybe you just want to do some ascetic writing where it doesn't really mean anything and you're just implying that that's something there I might go back and do that on this one here you could do 
Neo Color 2 crayons. You could do soft pastels. So many choices. <laughs> I'm just kind of playing here now because I'm like, ooh. Let's just do something we've never done and see what we get. Because if you always do the same thing you've always done, you're always going to get the same result you always got. <laughs> Look how crazy that just turned out. <laughs> I'm kind of loving that. Kind of want to do some of this here in the middle. I mean, it really could look more like a little bit like graffiti-ish. Like maybe we went out and did some graffiti out there. Oh, I do love some Posca pen. So we could come back here on this one and add some yummy Posca. Ooh, I love that. Some fun extra little marks and that's dynamic movement of this piece. Oh yeah, that's pretty. See, now this is so pretty. I, I really am loving what's got going on here. This one, I'm gonna take my other dip pen and do some really fine just implied writing and you see this nib is a little bit finer than the other nib that I was creating with and we're only going to really notice and see that as we shine it in the light um, which is makes it really beautiful to me I love that maybe I'll just kind of do a little down here too and you might look at that and think what does that say what does this piece mean to me what is the piece telling me because you're not quite going to be able to read that writing but you never know might be something amazing and your mind can fill in those details okay so I love that I'm actually kind of now that I've got that gold out I'm actually kind of thinking that I want to add some gold to this piece I wasn't going to do that originally oh no 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 this is what we're going to do we're going to go back with Oh, yes, yes, this one here. This is like half tone circles. And I've got a little palette paper here. We're going to add a little bit of gold stencil work to that. And I think that will do it for me. So I have an art sponge. These are just little round sponges. You can Google art sponge. I'll put a link under here to my favorite one. I just cut these into fours and then I have plenty to work with. We're going to do some of these little halftone circles right here on this and see what we can get. Oh, that's so cool. All right, let's do a few more up here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That totally did it for me. Oh, yeah. See, it's just a tiny sparkly. When you get in the light, you can kind of see it. Oh, totally what I wanted. Totally what I wanted. And that kind of makes me want a little bit over here um, of my punchinella. Just cause. Just cause I love it. It'll be a little extra decoration to the circles I kind of already have on there. I love punchinella just about basically on everything <laughs> it's just my own personal preference there just put it everywhere <laughs> okay so that's pretty fun i love those this piece i don't know we could come back and do one more thing on it and just get crazy because it's basically ended up being kind of a crazy piece but what if we did this corrugated lines in here why not do it in gold since I already got the gold out? This is my Kiritake Gold Mica Paste that I'm using. It's my very favorite gold. It's a calligraphy gold that you can use as is, or you can thin it down with water. You can write with it, draw with it. It's kind of cool stuff. I already put the sponge away. Let's get another sponge. That's why I like having lots of these because they're very handy. And I can actually kind of scrub it in there also. If I want to do that. Oh, totally. That totally made that for me. Look at that. 
we come back and we have that little bit of gold on there <laughs> super cool so this is a piece i'll actually probably keep working on um, this one's perfect and this one's perfect so let's just peel the tape and see what we got and then we can decide you know as we look at our pieces later does it need other stuff now this paper tears with the tape so I have a lot of people ask, how do you get that tape off without tearing your paper? And sometimes I tape just the very edge of it and the less paper you have under that tape, the less likely it is to tear that paper. The other thing I do is I peel it at an angle, kind of like you saw that was coming off at an angle and I go kind of slow. So at an angle, kind of slow, kind of pulling it in this direction and you can just see and that peels very easily without tearing your paper because this is a paper that tears for me pretty easily so it's just taken care now if you start to pull it and you've still pulled like part of a corner off and you're like oh no this is going to tear my paper take your heat gun heat the tape up and then that tape just releases like magic like magic <laughs> so that is the big secret with peeling tape go slow pull an angle use the heat gun if it's tearing your paper but i found if you kind of peel this like this at this little angle you see how it just kind of lifts up without tearing stuff when you go too fast and you're pulling it straight from straight on you tend to tear everything um and that's how you cannot ruin the piece of artwork at the end when you're peeling tape. And one other thing I wanted to mention, you know, when I use the water bottle to splash water on the center piece, and so it splashed uh, some paint into the other pieces. If that had been a big deal to me and I didn't want these water splatters over here, I could have covered this side and this side with a piece of paper as I was splashing water. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're splashing water, that stuff is going off onto your other pieces. You could kind of cover them up to prevent that. Look how fun that piece turned out anyway. Super fun. The little gold is what finishes that for me. <laughs> Oh, this first one though is going to be my little love. Definitely my little love. Look how pretty it is. Whoa! This is beautiful. And if you've got any watercolor powder off there that didn't dry, that didn't get wet, you can just kind of blow it off. But look how beautiful we ended up with there. And the gold that shines in the light. I'm loving that one. <laughs> and this one is super fun. Oh yeah, see? Got the tape off without tearing the paper. Ho ho ho! Look how pretty that is. Oh, get up close. You can see the little shine in there. So here we go. I hope you have as much fun experimenting and trying out and playing with some watercolor powders as I have had. I've become a little bit obsessed with them and there's all kinds of brands out there. So if you find a different brand than what I'm playing in, definitely get that and try it out because depending on where you're at in the world, you may have a different option than I have. But these are super, super fun. And keep in mind, if you get any that say they're mixed with walnut crystals, you're going to get um, dark color splash in the middle of your colors and if you don't like that that's what that does so just be aware I hope you had fun today I can't wait to see what you create if you love getting fun art videos like this definitely subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time